So Canon and Nikon are about to release their new mirrorless cameras. Phase detection, do you want it? That's coming up on The Morning Jolt. What's up, guys? Welcome back to yet another Morning Jolt episode. I hope you're all doing well. I probably could have slept in for an extra couple of hours, but I got up because you guys are so important to me. Well, just a few of you. Most of you I don't even know. Let's be real. As I said before, Canon and Icon are coming out with their new mirrorless cameras. Um, I'm excited to see what they have to offer, but there have been a few people that have questioned whether or not this new mirrorless camera is going to have on-chip phase detect autofocus. Traditionally, DSLRs have almost always had phase detection autofocus on those cameras. That's the reason when you saw some of the older uh, Sony cameras, like the, the first iteration of the Sony A7R, uh, no phase detect. And in Sony's A7R Mark II, they finally did put it in. And I think that that was the catalyst for a lot of the uh, more professional or uh, high-level enthusiasts to go, you know what, maybe I should pick up a Sony camera and try it out. Because once it finally got phase detection, stuff started to move along a whole lot faster. At least they could get the shot very, very quickly. Their, uh, their system was a lot lighter, and they could uh, enjoy their day not carrying around a huge you know, 1DX Mark whatever. Again, I'm not really for sure if Nikon is going to have phase detection on chip in this brand new mirrorless camera, or Canon for that matter. Phase detection, for me, uh, is an extremely high priority. Not only do I appreciate the benefits of having a hybrid autofocus system, but I also appreciate the speed of having a hybrid autofocus system. The problem that you begin to run into is that even Sony, who had several forays into phase detection, on the chip, you know, they didn't always get it right. Now, Sony has had pretty damn good autofocus when it comes to both stills and video, but they didn't always get it right. Sometimes it wasn't as useful as you would think that it would be. Canon's dual pixel autofocus has been relatively solid, and that's the reason that it has earned its reputation, but there are not only a lot of hybrid autofocusing systems out there now, but there are more and more hybrid shooters than there ever were. Not only do photographers need to do their stills side of things, but we now need to do video as well. We have to literally do everything, it appears. Could you go vomit somewhere else? Come here, get out. Could you not? Are you serious? Are you really just gonna gag on my floor? He just gagged on my floor. So that's cool. I honestly don't even remember what I was saying before that happened. So I'll just move right into what's the key differences between phase detection and contrast-based autofocus. Phase detection basically calculates both the direction and the amount of focus correction needed. And that is why it is ridiculously fast and efficient. So what does that exactly mean? Every single lens has a specific amount of distance it has to travel and based on the motor inside uh, it can detect and then focus on an object. That was the reason why it had such a hard time. So a lot of the Sony's when you would put on a third-party lens and then you had to adapt it. See, Sony doesn't know. It doesn't know the parameters of every single third-party lens out there. So when you're adapting a lens on there, the calibration is not going to be as efficient as if it was from a first-party manufacturer like Sony themselves. They know exactly what went into that lens. They know exactly how much they can uh, move that lens or how much it requires in order to get from point A to point B. And if all else fails with a third-party lens, it just kind of defaults over onto contrast uh, phase detection. But you'll also notice that with adapted lenses and hell, even some first-party Sony lenses, those older models, you would see that little micro pulsing in the background. That is the phase detection algorithm working to kind of make sure that everything stays in focus. Now, unlike phase detection, contrast-based autofocus doesn't require any calibration. Generally with contrast based, that's the reason it's so much slower is it goes all the way through the range and then gets to the point of focus, goes just past that point of focus, and then it backs up and then locks on. But the major advantage is that it doesn't require any calibration. So while much slower, no calibration means you don't have to pack as much technology onto the sensor. Now that brings us over to Panasonic. Panasonic only uses contrast detection autofocus and that is the reason 
Panasonic's autofocus has always just been absolutely atrocious because it's not nearly as fast when it tries to track and focus. It is very slow. It is sluggish to a fault. And that was one of the main reasons I just absolutely could not pick one up because I do depend quite heavily on my autofocus system because us one man bands, we need it and we need it to work well. And I'm sorry, Panasonic. It just doesn't do so good. I'm not bashing on Panasonic. I'm just saying that your autofocus is no count. It literally is useless to me. And I have tried multiple different Panasonic cameras, the GH4, uh, the G7, the G85, and just all of them. Some of them were incrementally better than the others, but most just no good. So while a lot of those traditionally stills cameras which, you know, have this DSLR style or mirrorless style body. If they did some sort of video autofocusing, they would either do it really, really slow or just really, really bad. But with the hybrid autofocus systems that Sony was introducing, it became much, much faster. We began to see what was possible with these cameras because of that active tracking, that active video autofocus. And while you're sitting there taking a still, autofocus can be pretty damn great when you're only shooting a photograph. But when it comes to video, and that's the main point here, is that when it comes to video, you do need something much, much more advanced. So that requires a lot more technology to be built onto that chip. And without it, it's just going to be meh. So in my personal opinion, if Nikon does not actually have any sort of active tracking like sony has built into their cameras i don't know how well it's going to do to be perfectly honest with you and i don't know if nikon has even been working on developing one of those type of hybrid autofocusing systems that's going to be able to compete with the likes of the canon's dual pixel autofocus or sony's hybrid autofocus with the eye detect and all of that that is going to be the separating factor for i'm telling you probably 80 to 90% of everyone looking for a hybrid camera. All right, I'm about to do a little bit of talking and it's probably going to require coffee. And before I do this, Nikon shooters, do not get it twisted. I hope Nikon has been doing some research and development. There's a really good chance that they've got everything. They've got all their ducks in a row. They're not going to mess this up at all. This is going to be the bomb diggity. This is going to be the, the bee's knees. This camera is going to rock the socks. But in that unlikely event that they don't, they are going to suffer horribly. If they don't have the on-chip phase detect for this mirrorless camera, I think it's a non-starter right out of the gate. No matter, I mean, they'll be like, they're hardcore Nikon shooters that have always been wanting to try a mirrorless camera out. They'll still buy it. But you'll probably end up finding that a lot of those cameras will end up on the used market pretty quick. It's not going to take very long. You're going to end up finding a lot of open box buys on Amazon and Best Buy and eBay, but because within that 30 day period, I mean, I would just take it back. I mean, if it didn't have on-chip phase detection, like it would just be a non-starter right out of the gate for me. I would just be like, no. I have noticed that stuff on paper doesn't always translate into performance in the real world. So there is a chance that they've done some sort of weird voodoo magic that you know, some witchcraft that they've invented themselves and maybe it's just going to be uh, all that in a bag of chips, but who really knows? And really marketing is where it's going to be, right? Marketing is key. So if they don't have that tech and they're not able to put it on the spec sheet, will it be enough to get people to even buy it in the first place? Now, I think a lot of people are going to buy, a lot of reviewers are going to try and pick this camera up just so that they can you know, see how well it's going to perform and then report back to their audience base and their viewers and everything. Uh, when it actually comes to real world users, if this thing is a, is a, is a turd and they get verified purchases like on Amazon and those reviews start rolling in, it, it literally could be a, a Nikon apocalypse all over again. So I know exactly how important having some sort of hybrid autofocus with phase detection included is to me. I do a lot of video and when I'm moving in and out of the frame or over to the side or whatever, that's important to me. It's important to vloggers. And like I said in previous videos, billions upon billions of dollars are being made on many video platforms with people doing videos uh, that involve just walking around with a camera on a selfie stick. So it is big business and it would behoove any of these camera companies at this point not to offer something that is 
both accessible to almost everyone, but provides the same level of autofocus performance that both the Canon dual pixel autofocus has and the Sony system. That brings me to my point. How important is phase detection to you, both as a stills photographer or as a vlogger, videographer, or whatever? I think that autofocus at this point has gotten so good or at least good enough that it doesn't really make sense not to have it at this point, that I don't think that I would ever buy a camera that did not have it, that did not have some sort of, hey, that autofocus system's failed, let's fall back, let's work together, let's do it, let's get it in focus, bang, and it, have, it has to be fast. I mean, it can't just be, hey, we did it, but I mean, it sucks balls and it's not very fast. I mean, it does have to be fast like this, dual pixel autofocus, I mean... It just knows, and it moves, and it grooves, and it does its thing, and I'm 100% for it. Uh, I think that Nikon really needs to make sure that they knock this one out of the park. I mean, I really do hope that they are successful, because if they do plan on coming out with an adapter uh, that can support those older style lenses, and they had really fast either eye detection or the phase detection on chip, I think this camera is going to be extremely successful. So that's all I've got for you all today. Let me know what you all think. Do you all need phase detection? Do you all require phase detection? Do you like autofocus or are you just strictly dickly and you're big, you're always manual? You're always rotating your stuff manually. Come on, man, get in the 21st centuries and shoot a picture like Buck Rogers. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for stopping here and watching yet another episode of The Morning Jolt. And I will see you guys again on the next one. Peace.